Hi guys, so this is my first uh, interview with my inspirational people from my last day in Bali and I would like to introduce you to my friend and amazing fate changer, Teresa Fowler. And we're just going to have a chat with her about her life and her mission and her magic that she spreads in the world and she's been a huge inspiration to me. So I would like to share that with you. So this is Teresa. Hey everybody. Hi Teresa. <laughs> so um, we Hi. are pretty amateur at this. <laughs> uh, it's my, as you can see, it's my first one. So thank you for being my first guest. You're welcome, darling. And I would love if you could just tell people a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi everybody. My name is Teresa Fowler, aka the Thought Shifter. Um, I'm also taking on QMT, which stands for Quantum Mother Teresa. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm an oracle, I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I love playing with energy, and founder of the Power of Play. Um, basically, I, uh, well, not basically, I do a lot of things, I have a lot of tools in my witch bag, but um, <laughs> one of the, one of my main, uh, my main focus, my main mission is to help uh, millennial women love themselves, to support them in feeling that self-love for themselves um, because they will be the ones birthing the next generation of humans. Um, humans already wow. come into the world loving themselves and when they have mothers who get that. And that's huge for you because you're a big topic, let's say, amongst others, but you're one of your main obsessions is about self-love. Absolutely. So could you talk to us a little bit about how this became your big slogan? Yeah, um, I realized uh, it was about four years ago mm -hmm. when I actually felt self-love on a cellular level because self-love, it's a, it's, a, it's a term that's been used yeah. quite a lot and bandied around the spiritual community. Yeah. It's like this thing that we all have to attain. Um, like it's a destination, yeah. which it's hashtag defi self hashtag love. self love destination, <laughs> which it's definitely not. Um, and and yeah, from from my understanding of it, when I learned about it, it was it was a concept that we were all after. Yeah. But that concept was in my head. Yeah. Um, and um, I I have a gift of seeing people's shadows, and I realize <laughs> that's what you know most people are stuck in their heads with the concept oh I have to love myself thinking that it's self-care um and self-care is great it can get you there but it's it's more than self-care yeah self because people th I think it's really interesting that you talk about the difference between self-care and self-love and then not the same so just mm -hmm. because you get a massage or go on holiday that doesn't mean that you love yourself definitely not yeah. definitely not and it's a great way of looking after yourself yeah. but it's definitely not self love self love is literally a cellular feeling when you you know you we've all had that we've all had that um, experience of falling in love mm -hmm. you know when you when you've fallen in love your heart's expansive and like every cell is just like <laughs> dancing and you're like ah, nothing in the universe cares you don't care about any of anybody else's poops and you don't ev care. everything you, is great everything's fabulous because yeah. you don't care about all the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah 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 well that's self-love except you're feeling it for yourself not projecting it outwards to mm. somebody else yeah and your journey was not always that way <laughs> definitely so, not <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about how you started out and what even uh propelled you to do this kind of work because you're living well you're at the moment in bali but you've had a really interesting journey so we met just over a year ago at Mind yeah. Valley, and at uh, AFest A -Fest in Mind Valley, and so Teresa, as you can see, has this such a huge personality. Like you just <laughs> can't miss her. She doesn't have to open her mouth, mm -hmm. and she has just like this <laughs> glow. And um, we connected pretty quickly as it was. It was the first. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It was the first day. I kind yeah. of like walked in and registered, and then saw you sat down exactly. and was like, "Hey, girl." Who are exactly. you? <laughs> and so that was when you had just got to Bali and um, you had already been on quite a life expedition, let's say, mm -hmm. since then. So could you tell us a little bit about how you got from, because you've lived in the Netherlands, you lived in the UK, you lived in the US. Mm -hmm. 
So tell us a little bit about your journey and you've also come through quite a lot of health challenges. Mm. So explain to us about where you began. Okay, I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts in the States. Mm -hmm. um, I was there until I was 22. Born into a family I know now um, was mired in self-loathing. Um, right. Lots of autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with lots of autoimmune issues. Um, Diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, it's like, you know, it's, it's all there. All there, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's only recently, well, not that recent, a couple of years ago, I discovered that autoimmune disease, it on a metaphysical level, um, manifests as autoimmune disease. Totally. Yeah. So, so when you're not loving yourself, because um, obviously I'm a medical intuitive as well, and one of the first things about autoimmunity is where are you attacking yourself? Exactly. Right? So exactly. why are your cells turning on you? So why are your cells you? turning on you? Yeah. Exactly. Because internally you're feeling the self-hatred, so you internalize... And some of it is not even your own. So no, you're exactly. You're feeling it through the genetic well. line. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, so you kind of were born into this, let's I say. I chose, you chose to that. be born into a family with a history of autoimmune disease wow. because my obviously sole purpose was to love myself and feel that on a cellular level. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. But it took me over 50 years to get here. It took wow. over 50 years to get so here. So she doesn't look over 50, guys. Hashtag raising your vibration is the new Botox. Yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> if ever you wanted a pop-up doll for like the natural aging backwards, this mm, would be it. Absolutely. And absolutely. you also um, had some issues with addictions, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you 12, lost a whole bunch of weight. Yeah, up to 12 years ago, I was addicted to alcohol. Yeah. You know, two bottles of wine a night just to calm down. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't even Take a session. The edge Take the things. edge off the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was addicted to marijuana. I mean, I was a wake and bake kind of girl. Wow. <laughs> like, um, I was addicted. Well, I wasn't addicted to recreational drugs, but I used to take a lot yeah. of them um, to get by. I was definitely addicted to sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a hundred pounds heavier and it was when my dad died and I was diagnosed as a diabetic and wow. yeah, I heard that little voice, which I thought was a crazy voice, but now I know it was my higher self yeah. telling me to get healthy when I was standing at his grave. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I knew in that moment, I thought it was a crazy voice in my head, but it was but, just you. <laughs> yeah, it was just my eyes self talking to me, but but even then I was like crazy voice. But if I don't listen to the crazy voice, that's going to be me soon. To so wow. that literally scared the shit wow. out of me. Yeah. And so that was how long ago? That was twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And twelve years ago, then you left the states. Oh no, I left the states long before then. Okay. I was living in London by then. I left the states um, when I was twenty-two. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and to live. So I grew up at my adult life in London. Wow. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what drew you to Bali. And at the moment, mm -hmm. Teresa is um, based uh, in Bali, but based as well in KL and all around and Asia. Hashtag, so. hashtag over 50 glow mad. I'm, oh my God, I love that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that was a hashtag, but I'm going to use I, it. I've made it one. <laughs> So tell us about how you decided to leave your life in London. You were also living in Rotterdam in mm -hmm. the Netherlands and you came to AFAST and explain to us your last year. Because a lot of people think that to live as a digital nomad or like a gypsy is fun, glamorous, but tell us mm -hmm. what it's really it's like. It's not all glamorous. Yeah, um, tell us what it's really like, especially yeah. after you've kind of left everything, like, you, left you had yeah. part like half a century of your life doing something completely different mm. and it takes a lot of courage to just pack everything up and say I'm going to see what happens next. Yeah well it, it had a, a lot to do with the fact that I hate winter. I've decided right. I'm not doing winter anymore. I've had enough of that. Yeah. I'm, old, I'm old enough to know that I don't like yeah, winter. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, a lot of it was that. It was like I was coming out here to a first anyway and I was like okay well let's just see and hang out and I was meeting so many amazing people yeah. and I did I was I was gonna go back in February I had a ticket back I was like okay I'll spend the winter and then it just kind of yeah kept going and 
the more I let go of the old life, yeah. because seriously, like the growth game here is ridiculous. <laughs> the growth game here is ridiculous. I'm well. There's yeah. something about the land here, isn't there? It just kind of yeah. takes it. All of your shadows, and you've done All a lot of work of with your, your shadow, shadows. Right? Oh yes, you're here to face your shadows. Absolutely, so. and and Bali has a way of like bringing it right to yeah. your face if you're if you're ready for it. Yeah, you're gonna face it. Um, like last year, I think I was telling you earlier. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of lower back pain manifest yeah. and I knew it was a metaphysical thing because I don't get back pain. That's something that I've never had, and I was like, why all of a sudden this back pain? I'm like. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm. yeah, it turned out that it was repressed childhood rage. Wow. Exactly. So I had to work through that. Also, a lot of ancestral stuff came right. up. And, yeah, so so that's where the health issues came from because mm. I was physically dealing, angry. Angry, yeah. yeah. And I was, I was literally letting go. And it wasn't all mine. A lot of it, like I said, yeah. a lot of it was ancestral, but I had been holding it in my DNA and and that's what I find really interesting because so many times as women we're programmed to never be angry exactly and I also <laughs> have back issues yeah. also lower back issues and they also manifest I mean I've had back issues for a while but they manifest right after a fest mm. last year and um, you know it's this thing about you are this super happy glowing woman right and I wish you could see her shoes, but they're like a happy face on her shoes. Um, yeah, there we go. And you would never have thought by looking at you on the outside, so the package, that there could be so much rage. And that's yeah, this exactly. thing about, you know, this the superficial person that we see on the outside and then what's beneath it on the inside. And then exactly. health issues and actually the view of yourself that you have behind closed doors, which exactly. nobody sees. Which nobody sees, exactly. Yeah. And and knowing, like, this is like a deep knowing that I've, I've known for a while now. I remember watching people, I think it was probably about four years ago, watching people, um, I was in Rotterdam and it was, it was Valentine's Day. Yeah. And everybody was like running around like crazy, like buying flowers mm -hmm. that were like, you know, 10 times the price that they were the day before. And like, you know, everybody running around. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, observing kind of going hmm if they love themselves they wouldn't be doing this mm. <laughs> and realizing that every single per every single person walking on the planet is walking around with some kind of mm. repressed hurt and anger that right. that we've been programmed to believe we're not allowed to express and yeah the were a lot of the worthiness issues absolutely so at the root of let's say most of our shadow is feeling that we are worth something better mm -hmm. and um, all of that obviously then filters through and how we're living our life and so when you came to Bali last year explain to us a little bit about how you really had to step up into faith and trust because yeah. <laughs> you know I look at Teresa and I was like how did you have the guts to just leave everything, not know what's happening next, not having a plan, like super type A control freak, which Teresa says Which she I was. have been, I have been. And literally, um, I, I think I'm on a, a very similar, uh, let's say next transition in my life. And I would be so interested to hear how you decided to just take that leap and how that is manifested as you take taken that journey. Okay. Well, I definitely was a control freak. Yeah. I was, I was a journalist for 25 years in London Wow. and I used to read the guardian. So, you know, quite lefty. I yeah. used to, I used to read the guardian with a red pen. Wow. Because I would make, <laughs> I would correct what their sub editors wow. got wrong. So like I was a big control freak. Yeah. Like it wasn't even my paper. Right? So <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have been a control freak. Um, but I first came to Asia about twenty five years ago and I remember a friend I was like, right, itinerary we were going to Thailand and I was like, I made that itinerary and I'm like, we're gonna do this and this and like got up all the information from Lonely right. Planet because this was before the internet. Everything planned yeah, out. Yeah, everything planned out, there. exactly. We're gonna go here and there and this day and and I remember him looking at me going, Teresa, we're going to Asia. Expect the unexpected. Right. And I was thinking, and like by the second day, 
like all the plants had gone out the window and I, but I was kind of like wow but we're in Asia right <laughs> so that's why I loved Asia so much because yeah. it was just like you kind of have to it go. cracks you open it does crack you open yeah. big time I loved it um but also yeah the kind of just uh the trusting well the trusting came with trusting myself right. as well that's what it's all about massively right? massively um because my still <laughs> the tendency is for my analytical brain to try to figure out yeah. the energy stuff and the energy stuff just is energy yeah. just is mm -hmm. and what I feel I know now mm. is more valid than what I think yeah and we've been talking about feeling a lot because I was someone who just couldn't feel I'm too rude to say feel your way through it exactly. I, like, I, I don't know what you mean I don't, I don't what do you mean feel it and now when you're saying uh, and a lot of people say get out of your head but until recently until you actually um, feel until you, you start it, to yeah. feel it you don't get it you don't get so, it absolutely absolutely how do people start to feel Teresa yeah well that takes <laughs> that takes the courage and I'm yeah. saying courage because you literally have to you literally have to go, I'm choosing to quieten this, which takes courage because yeah. this is going on constantly and it always will. Mm. Um, but it's taking the courage to go, actually, I'm going to choose different. And I'm, I'm willing to feel. And I'm willing to me, feel. I'm willing to feel. Absolutely. Because most people don't want to feel because everybody's walking around with pain. Exactly. Everybody has so much pain, even if it's not theirs, but everybody has so much pain emotional baggage and pain all that energy like ugh, everybody has it mm -hmm. and they don't want to feel it exactly. because they think it's going to hurt really badly but in that hurting in that allowing of that hurt that's where the transformation totally and breaking through the veil and that's in. what i experienced very recently which i will talk about separately but when and i realized i was numb or i couldn't feel because it was a protection yeah. against ancestral group, historical soul level pain that I was also clearing for my ancestral line, for the land, for humanity. Exactly. And um, this is not in a sense of being arrogant. We all have no, the ability we, we to do We all have that. the ability to do this, but, but us doing the us doing the work, the work for ourselves for yeah. ourselves we're also doing it for the collective yeah. so it, it is important that we do it so when you got to bali and you decided uh with intention to feel your way into the next steps and sometimes that was not easy right so <laughs> no, not at all there were times when you said oh i don't know where i'm going next and you have, have to, to move out the next exactly day. i have to move out the next day yeah. and i literally have like 20 dollars in my yeah. account and if i use i can't even take the 20 dollars out of the machine because yeah. it'll charge me so i can use my card where can i go and have something to eat for 20 dollars yeah. <laughs> i can use my card yeah. um but I have no idea how am I going to, I have to leave tomorrow and pay the rent and find somewhere else to live. Yeah. Like literally that happened like two or three times over last year. And can you please explain to us how you get through that and how you then continue to, I guess, feel your way through the next steps. Okay. So that all has to do with self trust. Yeah. Like, like that's all it is. That's all it is. And, and, and breathing. And, and calming the nervous system down. Yeah. But like in the self-trust, just knowing. Because like, okay, think about something that you were like terrified of. Mm. Yeah? I was of... terrified of, yeah, leaving my corporate job. Okay, yeah. there you go. You were terrified of leaving your corporate job. What was the worst thing that happened? I had to move back in with my parents. I had to like take a lifestyle uh, cut. Okay. I, I had but to that was, change some friends. But that was the worst thing that happened. Yeah, I didn't die. And, and exactly. Me. And I bet when you were thinking about it, yeah. leading up to doing it, like you had all You're sorts paralyzed. of... You're paralyzed. Exactly. You had yeah. all, all sorts of horrific things going yeah. on in your head that didn't happen. Or they happen and then you realize while you're going through them, this is part of my journey. Exactly. And... Uh, even if it's uncomfortable, because a lot of it a lot is of it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable, exactly, and the uncertainty is uncomfortable. Of course. 
And then, but the only way to go through it, because I found that if you resist it, you're just staying in that uncomfort. When you resist, persist. Totally. <laughs> and then by actually taking action, whatever that is, it could just be like, okay, I'm going to just wake up in the morning and then see what's see happening. what's going to happen. Exactly. And I'm going to have a nap. So that's times. what I did a couple of times. It was just like, you know what? Like, I can't get out of my head now, so I'm just going to have a nap. Yeah. I'm just going to go to bed early yeah. and breathe and meditate and intend that like when I wake up in the morning, the answer is going to be there. It's all going to be fine. And it always has been. And it always has been. I haven't died. Yeah. Even though I got hit by, hit by a coconut oh, last week. This is a great story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Teresa, explain to us the story of the coconut. Yeah, I was literally walking down the street uh, almost two weeks ago. And um, yeah, I was... Stopped and startled <laughs> by what I realized was a fallen coconut that literally just like this was your protection. My afro, <laughs> my afro saved my life, um, like literally. And you know, it was also at a time. You know, it's it's really weird that you think of a coconut falling on someone's head, which actually <laughs> just never happens, right? Well, it does. People die from it, apparently. But but that's the thing. Do you think there was a particular reason that it happened at that moment? And what happened after that? Mm. In that moment, you were just stunned. <laughs> in that moment, I was just stunned. Yeah. Um, obviously the coconut hit me on the head for a reason yeah. and I didn't die for a reason. Right. Um, the fact that I'm waking up every morning now going, I'm alive! There you go. <laughs> I'm alive! Appreciation for Appreciation. Life. Yeah, like, I'm like really fucking grateful yeah. to be alive right now. Oh, that's well, sorry. Um, well, <laughs> whatever. Um, I'm fucking grateful <laughs> to be alive! Um, <laughs> Um, but also, yeah, what happened afterwards, I, I had, um, I had a slight concussion and I didn't realize it until I was wandering around Singapore. I was in Singapore right. last weekend and I was wandering around Singapore kind of going, that, that ant is interesting. <laughs> and I like watched an ant for about an hour and then I thought, oh, I feel a bit strange, but like the trees and, and it stopped me <laughs> and I like to, oh, and I sat at Marina Bay and, and I don't like the touristy bits, right. but I like sat there and I was, and I was just like looking at the water. I was away. I was on the other side of the crowd and I was like, I don't want to watch the light show. Why am I here? And then the moon started rising <laughs> above like the full moon. And I was like, ah, oh, that's why I'm here. And I just sat there watching the moon. It was amazing. So, I, <laughs> so just appreciation for literally the for small, literally the small things and just being wow. alive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is, like, I guess, everything. If we could just all wake up and just say, I'm so lucky to be alive. Exactly. Because um, usually I go to Singapore and run around like crazy because it's a city and you're running around like yeah. crazy. And this time I was just like, ooh, look at the ants. And this is also amazing because there were also times in your life where you were suicidal, right? So, yeah, so you've gone that. from being suicidal to, like, appreciating being <laughs> alive yeah. every day. Yeah. And tell, oh, us, absolutely. Yeah. tell us a bit about um, your work now. You're saying you work with millennial women. They're going to be birthing the next generation of the fate changers. So... Um, Tell us where we can find you. Tell us the kind of workshops that you do. Yeah. So basically, I'm all about the fun. <laughs> I've realized that um, even with shadow, I don't call it shadow work anymore. Yeah. It's like, no, who wants to do more work? Like, and shadow. Literally. And shadow. Exactly. Dark. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. Um, so, yeah, the way I, you know, have used all my witchy ways to cobble up things um yeah i basically take people through a 30-day process which mm -hmm. is a lot of fun um and also yeah i do workshops i'm doing a retreat soon yay yay, yay. details in the video yes. below um yeah doing my first retreat with another millennial amazing goddess How sister, fabulous. which is going to be fabulous um yeah you can find me um i'm more active on instagram at the teresa fowler and there's also my website, www.thoughtshifter.com. And the details will be under the video. So if you're looking for transformation, if you're looking for a goddess who shows you how to have fun, <laughs> um, if you're looking for a different way to experience life and yourself through someone who's been through many experiences, then uh, reach out to Teresa. 
So with that, guys, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Teresa, thank you for being my first guest. Yay. I feel so blessed. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for whatever's coming next. Watch it. Keep watching. <laughs> I am. <laughs>